Okay, for, for me, you know, this is what we call the gender parity, the equity issue. You know, boys and girls, it's 50%, 50%. So, you know, you cannot build a house only with one side, you know. So, it has to come together. And as I said, comparatively speaking, you know, access for girls has been more difficult, particularly in those rural areas, in remote areas. Uh, actually, we have some studies. Once girls are into school, sometimes, you know, they do better than boys. Yeah? And also in terms of completion. But it has also a positive effect, you know, with educated girls becoming women, mothers, the nutritional status of the children will be improved. Protection issues. Yeah, so it's not only a direct effect on education, but also, you know, on next generations. So it's absolutely necessary to, to continue to promote, you know, education for girls in this, in this country. This, uh, we have also uh, been reporting that uh, this, uh, especially when we come to the Western media, or in other uh, parts of the world, when they talk about Pakistan, then they think that religion uh, is one of the hindrances of this uh, education in Pakistan. But you mentioned that it's not like this. You said that, that is a facility that we have. I, again, I, uh, I have worked in other countries, you know, Muslim countries, uh, like in Algeria, for example, or in the Middle East. Um, it's, it's, it's very clear that Islam, you know, the Quran and other Islamic teachings are mentioning education from the cradle to the grave as a responsibility to everyone. Yeah? So it's not a religious issue in itself. Yeah, there are other cultural reasons why in certain parts of the country we would say, okay, yes, we can wait. You know, this is not the, the priority. But I think, you know, the religion in itself, particularly in this country, is the basis for education. Yeah. We are involving, for example, in KPK, in FATA, uh, an entity who is working with religious leaders to again spread the word that education is important you know, and is a responsibility of each and every Muslim. Yeah. So countering also, you know, kind of the negative tendencies of certain militant groups and we know that unfortunately is happening where girls schools are being attacked. Yeah. So to ensure a protective environment for the teachers, for the students, for the buildings. So again, where the community, the particular village, with the local authorities and the religious leaders and anyone else involved to say, yes, this is a sacred place yeah, and should not be come under attack. Uh, do you think that we have covered and besides on uh, missions, involvement, but we haven't focused very on uh, the good education inside so that we could pretend that? Mm. And uh, what's your observation in Pakistan with that? Yeah, of, of course, education without quality is, is absolutely a reason for dropouts. You know, it, for me, it's not either access or qualification. The quality, it has to, has to, go, uh, has to go together. Yeah, and that's again, you know, within the child friendly school approach, uh, we uh, have a lot of emphasis on the professional development of teachers. Yeah, and also you have a kind of a sense of commitment and responsibility because, you know, also in many rural areas, particularly, you know, we have the issue of uh, teachers' absenteeism. Yeah. yeah, I've been to schools, you know, where kids are teachers, the teacher didn't show up. Yeah, 11 years old, he's taking care of a classroom. This was in one of the uh, damaged schools uh, of, 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 of the whole uh, kind of class where you had kids from five years up to 15 years old. It was the boy of 11, 12 years who was the teacher. <laughs> so quality is important and you know you cannot separate 
quality from access or access from quality has to, has to go together. Which is missing here? More precise one. I uh, I I would say it varies, you know, according to provinces, you know. Um, but again, coming back to uh, the the question of okay, that in the beginning you the foundation for effective schooling is of course the early learning years. Yeah, and I think Katsi is a good model. Yeah, the earlier the better you can prepare kids for school. You know. This will guarantee that they will stay. In case, provided that you know you have good teachers too, you know, and good, of course, textbooks, the material teaching, learning materials, and, and so forth. So transition from preschool to school is very to primary school is very critical, yeah, and we have to do more. That's why we have, for example, the early childhood education standards, yeah, and more training needs to go to teachers on how to deal with the little ones and secondly the transition from primary to middle school because it's a shame with you know the interventions of UNICEF government international NGOs etc local NGOs we are able to provide education up to a primary level and then you know parents will say but next what's next and particularly for girls so, for example, again in, in Baluchistan, I can talk a little bit more about Baluchistan because of just being there. You know, we have been topping up, you know, primary schools with middle school components to ensure, you know, continuation of learning for boys, but also particularly for girls. Uh, so, and again, coming back to the legal provision, though, this is a very, very important tool for advocacy. Yeah, where we can say, and in terms of our resource mobilization. We, and we are now kind of refocusing, as I said, on the equity issue, go for the most disadvantaged groups, but secondly also, you know, foundations. So the early childhood development, early childhood education, the early learning years are very crucial. And then onwards to provision of educational opportunities for the middle school or the adolescence age group. So, it's a huge challenge, but it needs to be done. There is another kind of criticism in the development sector. It's UN, NGOs, and many other owners that are pumping a lot of money into it. Sometimes we feel that you can't say something on the ground. Means we see that our living, uh, for example, if an uh, NGO goes and does something different, and another comes with a different way to do the same thing. Means uh, when you see that there is problem, what if it is? Then do you think that that should be worked in a framework, uh, and there should be strong coordination? What's your approach? Yeah. And then uh, compared to other countries that they have that uh, mm. what's happening here? Yeah, I know definitely coordination is always a big issue, but it's absolutely essential. And we've seen that in the relief phase of the flood response, where we, you know, like in other countries, you know, we're promoting the cluster approach, the education, emerging education, and now early recovery cluster groups. Yeah, so right from the start, we requested the secretaries of education in the affected provinces, Punjab, Sindh, and so forth, to take the lead being shared and we have a global arrangement for emergency education where Save the Children and UNICEF are co-chairing. Yeah? And this is to bring all the stakeholders around the table yeah, to really say, okay, where are you working? What are you doing? Yeah? What is your methodology? And then kind of come up with the same approach into, of the same goals yeah, and strategies. Yeah? This is what it needs to be done. Now. The government has declared the relief emergency phase over, so we're now into early recovery, so we have early recovery working groups. And again, the same model is being used uh, in the various you know, affected areas to bring everyone around the table. Monitoring is essential. To have possibilities to really see the concrete actions on the ground. Yeah? Sometimes it's difficult because of security issues. Yeah, or other reasons which make it difficult to access to the schools. But we have third party monitors involved in the case of UNICEF so that we get an idea that yes, 
school supply has been sent to those schools and is being used. Yeah? Yes, a certain implementing partner has been engaged to do rehabilitation, minor repairs. Yes, it's taking place. Yeah? So the continuous monitoring is very important. And, and again, you know, in, in, the, in the forum and the meeting in, uh, with the parliamentarians and provincial education departments in, in Baluchistan, it was mentioned. Okay, actions on the ground. Yeah. It's important to have your concepts and your plans, and like the education sector plan, you know, consultated with everyone, so there's ownership, and then, of course, in the implementation phase, follow very closely, yeah, and go out and see the concrete actions, you know, being taken place on, on, uh, in the field, on the ground. As, as the ones I know, and I don't, I can't say that I will know all the local NGOs involved, but you know, who are involved also in the cluster mechanism, you know, in the coordination mechanism. And again, you know, we have been supporting.